The following message by Pastor Dennis Clark and Dr. Jennifer Clark is brought to you by Full Stature Ministries and its supporters. For more information about Full Stature Ministries, please visit forgive123.com. That's forgive123.com. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful day that we're able to meet here in, in the congregation before your presence. And we just thank you for your word that will go forth today. And let our hearts and eyes and our spirit be open to you this morning. In Jesus' name. One of, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm going back about eight and a half nine years when I first came to this location from abroad, no, from way out there from Kansas, Kansas City. Um, and one of the very first, very first things that I was standing here in this, before this was even the studio, I was able to teach. And one of the very first things that I taught the title of the message was, My Life is Not My Own. It was one of the very first things that I uh, had to realize after coming from probably one of the lowest points in my life uh, ever and turning back to God. It was one of the very first things that I realized that, you know, I was wrong for taking, I was, I was, it, wrong for taking everything that was given to me um, or striving after things that I wanted um, as opposed to, you know, thinking about God first, right? And what happened was it, it turned into a total, total disaster. <laughs> My life was completely amok it, 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 as opposed to what God wanted for me. Um, because when you live your life um, outside of where you believe what where God actually has you, once you, once you're born again, He has uh, directions and, and, and directives already put in place in your spirit that He wants fulfilled from you. And if you say, "Forget it," I'm angry, or whatever your reason is that you you backslide, um, you open the door to the enemy, and you create yourself. In your own kingdom, you're you're now the king. So then, good luck with that. <laughs> Blessings are going to come from where? Only if you make them, right? They're not going to come from God. Um, so yeah, my life was a complete and, and, and utter disaster by the time I got here. And um, basically, what what happened was is when I when I finally arrived here and was presented with some of the tools that Kingdom Life Church had to offer in Full Stature Ministries as far as the 60-day challenge, which is, uh, I can't be the best, you know, a more promoting of that particular item. Um, it will be life-changing, transforming for you if you actually um, are really in, in, your, in your heart, want to offer that to God and give Him all your garbage is basically what it is. Um, so I had a lot of garbage when I got here and I said, Let's, let's, you know, they said, let's do the 60 day challenge. And I said, I have no idea what that is. But when they showed me how to receive forgiveness and, and, and release forgiveness um, and, and from my heart, um, just like being born again, you receive Jesus in, you just same, it's the same aspect. You, you know, when you were born again, to receive that forgiveness and cleanse all that garbage. And like I said, I had a lot of garbage accumulated over the years. And um, I didn't really want to go into my testimony as much, but to see the impact that it had on me as far as my life isn't my own, period. And, and the, that realization um, has grown, and God has been taking me through since eight, eight and a half, you know, nine years ago. Till, till now, where he's taken me through several months, maybe even more than a year, 
on stewardship and, and kingdom stewarding. And, and all of that really transpired because I, I you know, the, when the Lord showed me that my life wasn't my own. Little did I know that nothing was. <laughs> Nothing's my own. In fact, what's it, the scripture in Psalms says, the earth is the Lord's, all it contains, the world and all those who dwell in it. Hmm. That leaves nothing for me <laughs> to own, right? And so that's how, how the Lord was showing me, uh, um, you know, the progression from my life is not my own and none of yours is either. Once you are born again, you have given those rights and the, uh, all of that over to God, and rightfully so. The scripture, and that's, that's, not, that's not only just the garbage, and I, and I said I had a lot of garbage accumulated too, but I mean, there, I had a lot of good qualities, you know, uh, but that also includes giving up your gifts, your talents, your, you know, everything that, that, that you feel is your own and that you can, even your, your children, I know like a lot of parents don't like to hear that, but all of those things belong to God and we are called to steward over them. But the scripture that I, 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 I love, it's a, it's a heart scripture that God gave me. Um, and it was really in accordance with the 60-day challenge and how, how God works through the 60-day challenge in order to clean us up. And, and it was out of the message translation, which is, is kind of a, a very uh, easy-to-read translation. Uh, but it's 2 Samuel 22, 21 through 25. And it says, God made myself, <clears throat> my life complete when I placed all the pieces before him. When I cleaned up my act, he gave me a fresh start. Indeed, I've kept alert to God's ways. I haven't taken God for granted. And every day I review the ways he works. I try not to miss a trick. I feel put back together and I'm watching my step now. God rewrote the text of my life when I opened the book of my heart to his eyes. <laughs> it's almost like the process of the 60-day challenge in an effect of, 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 you know, just close your eyes and honoring him, asking him to do the search, you know, laying out all the pieces, asking him to do the, the picking and choosing of what he wants to transform you know, I open the book of my heart to his eyes, and that's exactly what we do in order to, to get cleansed. I think that just as we have given all to him in our salvation and wanting to give that over, we are now then called managers or stewards over the things that he gives back. Amen? One of the, the definitions of, of kingdom steward I wanted to, us to look at, which is a believer who faithfully oversees the protection and expansion of the assets God has entrusted to him to manage on his behalf. It's a believer who faithfully oversees the protection and expansion of the assets God has entrusted him to manage on his behalf. What's really, really cool about being a manager is, is, as far as, as opposed to an owner is that we, we manage the best to our, the, you know, to the best of our ability, the things that he's given us. We're also called to expand. We're also to, to multiply that which was given. Um, and you can look at that in the parable of the talents. And as far as like how, how the, the, the three people um, were given a certain amount of money for stewarding over. And, you know, um, when they didn't multiply, of course, the third was called, you know, bad names. And, and, and everything that he did have was taken from him. And some people think that, the, well, that wasn't, that wasn't very nice. 
Uh, you know, he, he took care of what was given to him, but he didn't multiply it. And we're, we are called to multiply the things that God gives us. At least utilize it so that it, it grows and, and matures. But what the message is today that I wanted to bring forth was, it was called God's Rewards Program. We're all familiar with rewards programs of certain types, whether it's a grocery store card that you scan uh, for points or, or for frequent flyer miles that you get for spending so much money in airline tickets or uh, things that they offer on the, on the flights. Um, and they build up so that you'd almost have a free flight here and there. Everybody's familiar with rewards programs. There, there are incentives that are built in to, 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 to help you spend more money or you know, to keep uh, staying with that particular brand or format. Um, but God actually has a rewards program that he uses, and it's all throughout Scripture. Um, but it is based on stewardship for the most part. Now, there are things like salvation, which is a gift and you can't earn it. You can't, it's not a, re a reward or an incentive for anything. You know, some people think it's just fire insurance or whatnot, but it is, it, it's a free gift and we can't earn it. Um, I'm not talking about that. But I am talking about is after our salvation, what we're responsible for. And um, you know, it's the things that we're responsible for that we um, tend to, that we manage, that we that we uh, give to the Lord back, that we you know are obeying. Um, those are the thing. Those are the things that we get rewarded for. You know, and it's all throughout Scripture. Whether it's you know um, honors reward, which is like you know um, honoring those who. who um, deserve the honor where it's due, you, you actually receive from, uh, like if you were, if you were welcome the prophet in the name of the prophet, you receive the prophet's reward. Um, the, um, the virgins with the oil, the ones that were wise were rewarded. Um, th there's all these different things, the way that God works as far as like incentive wise, it's, but it's all based on obedience to him and the heart. And, it, and it's not just works. It's, heartfelt in obedience with the fear of God in you, uh, obedience. Um, one of the, and I, and I found seven, okay? We're going to talk about seven different ones um, that have to do a lot with stewarding. Reward number one is answered prayers. The first benefit of being a kingdom steward is answers to prayer. And you know what? When we uphold our end of the, the deal as manager over the things that God's given us, you know what? He responds to us by paying more attention to what we pray. <laughs> he gives us more of a presence in our prayer time when we are willing to be obedient to what he speaks and taking care of our commitments that he's given us, there's a greater involvement in our prayer time that God has. And it's not like we're twisting his arm or anything. It's just because that's how he is. Psalm 50, verse 14 and 15 says, Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and pay your vows to the Most High. Call upon me in the day of trouble, and I shall rescue you, and you will honor me. You see, when you treat God as owner, while you act as manager, he is much more open to your prayer requests. 1 John 3.22 states this very clearly. That's 1 John 3.22. And whatsoever we ask, we receive from him, because we keep his commandments and do the things that are pleasing in his sight. Notice the qualification of the last dependent statement there. That little clause at the end, it says, keep his commandments and do what is pleasing in his sight. What's the first part? Whatever we ask, we receive from him. But it's all, it's, it's all about obedience to him. We, we need to have that heartfelt 
and that that transfer that transform mind and, and and to honor him and keep his commandments because it's pleasing to him and then he will respond in our prayer time reward number two the first one was answered prayers the second one your needs will be met now everybody knows Philippians 4.19 probably by heart and my God will liberally supply fill unto full your every need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus amen you know what that is one of the best promises that you can put on your refrigerator and remember and try to you know God will supply all my needs it doesn't say some he says all my needs are going to be supplied through him by his riches and glory and we name it and we claim it and we say that's for me okay and then we don't see everything coming through the way that we thought and we get a little anxious about certain things in our lives that we don't feel like our needs are being met but you know what we can't just skip the few verses before it let's take a look at 15 through 18 Philippians 4, 15 through 18. And you, Philippians, know that in the early days of preaching the gospel after I left Macedonia, this is like uh, Paul's first trip to the Philippians, uh, the church of Philippians. No church shared with me in the manner of giving and receiving except you alone. For even in Thessalonica, you sent a gift more than once for my needs. Not that I seek the gift itself, but I do seek the profit which increases in your heavenly account, the blessing which is accumulated for you. But I have received everything in full and more, and I am amply supplied, having received from Epaphroditus the gifts you sent me. They are the fragrant aroma and an offering that's an acceptable sacrifice to God that he welcomes in which he delights. We can't skip those verses and just claim 19. Why? Because verse 15 through 18 is a prioritization of stewardship. <laughs> You're putting God first and the importance of, of giving to him first. And then God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. You have to take that. You can't just pull that out and say, I claim that without doing and being the responsible steward in prioritizing that stewardship. Now, there's a couple exceptions, of course, probably several. But one of, one of the exceptions is that God takes us through sometimes of stretching, sometimes wilderness experiences, things where we feel like we, he doesn't supply our needs fully, but we're still alive and, and kicking. Um, it's to prepare us for another spiritual level, so to speak. And Paul experienced that a lot. I mean, you could read it from, from some of the first writings to his church until the, some of the last writings of the church. He became less of him and more of, of God. But in the process, it was like killing him. And I'm the, I'm, 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 you know, I'm the least, I'm the worst. You know, and it was a natural progression, degression at the same time. It was a progression of God building that person and the other side of him going downhill, which is a good thing. More of him and less of me. The other, the other time is, you know, in, in like wilderness experiences, he's, 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 building, he's building, stretching, and strengthening you in those times if you are uh, yielding and you are you are doing because sometimes it, it happens that even when you are obeying God it feels like it's just not pulling through for you um, maintain a good attitude I tell you what one of the one of the things that's that, that's that's very difficult and, and right now we need a lot of miracles as far as like physical healings and stuff in our, in our congregation let alone you know um, those in our family members and, and things that are sick and and the things like those times, we've got to make sure that our attitudes 
stay correctly prioritized as far as is how we see God and, and how we respond. Um, it reminds me of a little bit of like, I think it was maybe Psalm 42, where Psalm 42 is the, the, the entrance uh, of the King of Glory, lift up your gates. But I, I believe it, it's the beginning of it that he that he's just like a point in, in, I don't remember if it's that one or not, but there are so many points in, in, in scripture where, where David just felt like completely obliterated, that the, his enemy had him, he was in, he's in captivity of some sort, the enemy just knocked him upside down and backwards, people spoke really ill about him, and he was just like, God, how long, and, and where are you? But at the same time, he was building the man in those processes. Because what does he do? He says, nevertheless, I honor you. You know, there was a part in Job, I think it was Job 6, where part of that, part of that verse says, even though I'm in such horrible pain, I, have, I, I will never say anything against what God says, or I will keep speaking what God has spoken to me. Um, those are attitude, those are internal things that, that need to be strengthened, that God wants to strengthen sometimes. Um, so, so there is that one element that is, is kind of a, a caveat in, the, in the, the verse 419 that he will meet all your needs. Yes, he, he will, but sometimes there are times of growing. The second time that, that you, don't, you might not feel like those things are being met is when it's not really a need that you're praying for. It's not really a need. You think it is. Um, but that, that, you know, sometimes it, it makes it, it makes you feel like when you're praying for something that you feel like you need and you really need it, um, and it just falls on deaf. It feels like it falls on deaf ears, or the the prayers get hit hit the ceiling and fall back down. Um, and there are times that when everybody has those times that every once in a while in their lives. Um, but whether we're not really looking at the situation, I guess. Uh, realistically or truthfully or whether we um, can't see the whole picture based on where we're at in life um, those things we don't really need not necessarily is God going to give as far as your answer to prayer um, so those are just really the two things when there's a time of stretching or growth and I'm not talking about the next stretcher that, that my dad is, is using you know, I thought it was really great, though, because I, it, I think they were going to get me one to help with the headaches and different things like that in your neck. But, you know, I don't know if it'll make me any taller, but if it does, Gwen is going to be really excited. Because <laughs> I'm about a half inch shorter than her, and, it, and I think it really bugs her. But anyway, um, so I'll use that all the time. Maybe I'll, I'll come back and I'll be a foot taller. That'd be great. As long as it's not just my neck. I don't know how that'll work. <laughs> Sometimes when we're praying for things that we think we need, um, they're, they're, like I said, in reality, they're not really what we really need. And only God knows. And what happens, um, and it happens for many reasons, whether it's a soul tie or something we're connected to um, that we don't want to let go of. Um, it could be a good thing. It could be ministry oriented. It could be something. But if it's not, the priority isn't God. What is your will in this area? You know, if your heart attitude isn't that, then um, you could be steering down the wrong path. Um, usually, it's an agenda of some sort that is outside of of God's arching rule. Um, you just don't know it because it it, it turns into like a blind spot. Funny thing about blind spots is pretty much everybody sees them about you, except for you. So if you have a question, you know, or if you're rebuked by the pastor saying, nope, that's not God, um, somebody will let you know uh, why. Um, but then, you know, be humble, release it. Uh, But good stewardship, I mean, I'm going to tell you, though, even when, as far as, as, far as uh, God, uh, he is still, 
he still is faithful in fulfilling the promise of fulfilling all your needs. Even when you're praying for something you just want, right? If, you, if you're wanting something that's not a real need, and you really think that it is a need, he may actually give you what you need as opposed to what you wanted. And I tell you what, there's nothing better, though, than the the example of Gwen and I's relationship. When we first, I mean, it's, 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 it's funny and it's not funny, but my, when I got here, my picker was broke. And I, and I've said that over and over again in different testimony type settings, but I had particular preferences and a specific you know, how many people have actually written down, I want this in, a, in my husband, my future husband, this and this and this and this and this, and I have these. And those are all nice things, but if you're demanding those things, you may be alone a long time. <laughs> when I finally was able to give up and I said, Lord, I'm broken. Like, the, my, my flesh stinks doing doing this because of all the different things that I've gone through, I put myself through, I should say, of what I wanted um, has actually caused me so much grief that I'm done. I'm just going to listen to you and I'm going to get right with you and I'm going to go 100% for you and that's it. I put his, I put that at the highest list on my list as, and, and I was good with that. And I, and I said, whether I ever get married or whether I stay single, I'm going to serve you. I'm going to try to please you no matter what. And then it seemed like three minutes later, Gwen came in and he, she said, he, God told me, go talk to her. And I went, uh, but I just started getting right, I think. <laughs> I didn't, I, I was, I was neutral. I didn't, I was, I was okay. And, and with God. And, and then all of a sudden he's like, nope, I want you to talk to her. And then pretty much a month later, we were married. We went on one date, and then God spoke to both of us and said, we, we're not dating, we're not allowed to date. And then he gave us both a date. And what was that date for? Oh, that's when we're going to get married. Okay, better tell the, better tell the parents it's, been, it's three weeks from now. <laughs> but I tell you what, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't one of those things where I, I, I said that th- these are my preferences. You know what? God doesn't care about preferences. Our preferences. He, he, he loves to have us in, and surprise us with certain things that, that, that we enjoy and, and everything. And, and that's what makes us our, all our, you know, all of us different. But he, but for the most part, when God is knowing what you need, he's going to give you what you need, not necessarily what you ask for. And, and, and I welcome that. I welcome that. And that's, that's how Gwen and I got together in the first place. And we were completely blessed. I don't know what I would have done if I would have tried to pick again. Dear Lord, I don't know. I'm very happy. I'm very happy. Not Terry. You're, Terry. you're, you're happy too. Reward number three. Divine guidance. The third incentive of kingdom stewards is that they receive divine guidance and increased discernment. With all the options, opportunities, and uh, all the different areas of work and career and, and, and all these different things that, you, that, are, that are out there, uh, all the different brand names of <laughs> soap and stuff that you can pick from, that's a little low on the list there, but... The Holy Spirit will lead us through all of those if we allow him. And so that we can make the best possible choices. Isaiah 48, 17 puts it like this. This is what the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel says. I am the Lord God who teaches you to profit, who leads you in the way that you should go. Oh, that you had paid attention to my commandments, then your peace and prosperity would have been like a flowing river. And your righteousness, the holiness and purity of the nation, like the abundant waves of the sea. There's a little rebuke at the bottom of there, but that was because it's been taken out of context. 
But in reality, if you look at the entire, that entire two verses in and of itself, what does he say? He's actually saying, literally, if you set your affections on him as, and put him as number one, all, of, all the things that he thinks is way more important. What do you think, Lord, about this decision? Yea or nay? Left or right? If you, y- y- your heart is automatically, what do I do, God? I need, because it's showing your honor towards him, your, 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 your reverence towards him, your fear of the Lord. He will respond with an answer. He's literally saying here that if you set your affections on him as number one and take him seriously, which is the fear of the Lord, meaning he's in charge and when he, then he will teach you to profit and he will lead you to godly decision making. Now, this isn't just profiting in in material or in financial ways. He will teach you to profit spiritually, right? This divine guidance is not limited to those areas of career or investment. It also includes dealings with one another, navigating people issues. God is all about people issues. By increasing our ability to discern especially when we're stewarding our affections, putting God first, prioritizing spiritual uh, stewardship, as we said earlier. But it's also stewarding the fear of the Lord. Whether you are in, you know, uh, here in the congregation or at home, I wanted to share this. This is something that, this is a series that I did along I don't know, last year maybe, how to make good or godly decisions, right? Godly decisions is most important. Good decisions, but how do you make God decisions? And, I'm, uh, and I, I wanted to share that with you because it's all about reward number three, which is divine guidance. And most of what this is, a, the, the most impact that any of these teachings had was, was in fact, the stewarding our affections, which I brought up, um, I believe it was Leah, and um, how at the end of her turmoil of, of not having children, eventually she, by stewarding her affections towards God, turned to God and says, I just want to worship and praise you. And she became pregnant like that after years of suffering. The second thing that was, that was really um, impactful in my own life um, as far as the teaching and what I learned when I was doing the, the teaching was stewarding the fear of the Lord and making sure that, um, I don't know if anybody's actually heard that term, stewarding the fear of the Lord, but it is it keeps you from, you know, uh, false teachings and it keeps you. It, he, when, when you have the fear of the Lord and you're obeying and setting Him as number one and and that's all you want is him to be pleased with you, that he keeps you safe. He keeps you in his perfect peace. He keeps you there. Um, of course, we have, they have wrote the book, that Flowing in the River of God's Will. It's just, it's the same. If you, if you are in that particular place where you're, you're ultimately wanting to please God in everything that you do, before you think of it yourself, or before you think of anything else that you're over, then God will actually have his way with you. It'll be like sitting in a raft going down the river of God's will. It's when you decide to step off and do your thing that you get messed up, and you do get messed up, because you then open yourself up to the enemy, as well as ramifications of whatever kind, whether it's you know an improperly, you know, um, invested item or uh, or whatnot. God's guidance doesn't always make sense, but it does make miracles. I, if you look back at First Kings, I think in chapter seventeen, where where um, the prophet Elijah came to the woman and her son that were out to make their last meal. 
and she was about to use the little the last bit of her oil and what they had and figured that they were going to they were going to make their own their last meal and done and then they would probably perish she meets the prophet of course and then the prophet says what go ahead and make me a meal lady but because of her obedience and her honor towards the prophet, she reaped the prophet's reward. God, of course, back then spoke through the prophets. So she listened to obeyed God and did what he had told her. And she was without need after that forever. So it does, it makes miracles. I mean, you look at, I mean, how many people would, would be told... It, you know, if you're praying for somebody and they, they, they were blind, like Jesus spit and made some mud and stuck it in the guy's eye. It makes no sense. It made no sense. But if God told you to do it, do it. At least give them a heads up, though. <laughs> I don't know if Jesus gave him a heads up or not, but I don't think he cares now. When you make decisions as a kingdom steward, God drops his heavenly wisdom into your plans and into your ideas. And by the Holy Spirit, he will lead you to discern the paths to take. He always leads us to prosper and to multiply what we've been given for his glory, for his glory. Amen. Reward number four, a purpose-filled life. Everybody searches for purpose, and especially some of the younger crowds that that aren't very churched and they don't they want to stay out of church they, they, they want to do their own thing but you know what they're searching and they're searching for purpose for meaning of life what better purpose to be able to embrace a spiritual you know pursuit and please God there's no better purpose Acts 17 26 says that you know what he's placed us here from one human being, he created all races of people and he made them live throughout the whole earth. He himself fixed beforehand the exact times and the limits of the places where they should live. So he put us here at this time, at this place, to do what? And secondly, he says, what? He designed for us some good things to do. In fact, every believer has been given a preordained good work to do, if not more, right? To advance his kingdom. Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are his workmanship, his own master work, a work of art, created in Christ Jesus, reborn from above, spiritually transformed, renewed, and ready to be used for good works, which God has prepared for us beforehand, taking paths which are already set, so that we would walk in them, living the good life which he prearranged, and made ready for us. I've never really read it through that way. But you know what? We were created for good works that he prepared for us already beforehand and paths to take already if we would just be willing to be willing to walk them out. We'd be living the good life because he arranged for us to be living the good life. What is a good work? Good work is a divinely ordained task or tasks that honor God and impact people according to his plans. They're divinely ordained tasks that honor God and impact people. He placed us here on earth during the specific time in this place that we would be functioning in his divine and unique role that each of us has been foreordained to fulfill for him, not for us, not to make us happy, but for him, for him and not ourselves. Jesus explains why this is important. If you turn into uh, Luke chapter 12, verse 16, and the parable of the wealthy fool. This is, this is Jesus' explanation of why this is so important. Then he told them a parable saying there was a rich man whose land was very fertile and productive. And he began thinking to himself, what shall I do since I have no place large enough to store my crops? Then he said, this is what I'll do. I'll tear down my storehouses and build larger ones. 
I will store all my grain and my goods there, and I will say to my soul, Soul, you have many good things stored up, enough for many years. So rest and relax, eat and drink and be merry. Celebrate continually. But God said, You fool. This is this very night your soul is required of you, and now who who are you gonna send all these things to that you prepared for? So it's just for the one that continues to store up and hoard possessions for himself. It is not he is not rich in his relationship towards God. Pretty much everything in your Bible in red letter is very important. You want to read that over and over again, right? And you think, I mean, think even a little bit that I did this in life. Anything that you think a little bit, I did this. I'm good at this. I created it. Watch yourself. Watch your step. Right? This is, this, this is a very important statement that I'm going to make that I learned while I was studying for this. And I want you to write it down if you're a note taker, please, because you can see the ramifications and it's in a lot of areas. When you confuse ownership with stewardship, you will tend to place the bulk of your investments in the wrong location. When you confuse ownership with stewardship, you will tend to place the bulk of your investments, the emphasis of your investments, will be in the wrong locations. Whether that's time, talent, treasures, you're investing in people, whether that's money and finances, directions in life, career. If you are in control and you don't want to give up control and you could care less about pleasing God, you just want to look out for me, myself, and I, which is taught. It's, it's ingrained in us since kindergarten in the public schools and media. You deserve a break today. It's all about you, self-help, self-awareness, self-everything. But you will continually put the emphasis of your investments in the wrong people. Trying to raise, If you're in the ministry, you, you would be investing incorrectly into the people that don't really want it, don't need it, are going to use it and abuse whatever you're doing. Time, talent, treasure, waste of time. If you're in the business aspects, just business world, and you never ask God for direction, whether or not it seems right to do a certain thing. You know, we have a, 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 our friend, uh, Sandy Culkin. If something was put in front of him, his business was so, he was so uh, wanting to please God in every choice that he's ever made in his business career that he would sit and look at this and look at this and say, this looks fantastic. This is a, uh, I would be silly not to take this deal. What do you feel, God? No? Okay. We don't do that. It, it's, it's, you, you, you have to get that, um, the affections towards him first and putting him first. And, he, and he's, he's very well off right now because of, because of those things. It's just like, um, oh, I can't remember the guy's name now. Um, he's very influential in the, in, in the, in the, well, he's in Christian. Uh, I think it's Dave Ramsey, maybe. And I think that whatever he did was when he was, when he was getting his degrees in all his finances, he was making lots of money. But at one point he was making lots of money, but he was just as much in debt. And he's like, what is all the stuff I learned doing for me? I'm making a lot of money, but I'm not, I'm, I'm just zeroing out, zero balancing everything. Until he came to God and he said, I asked him, you know, God, I, I want you to be Lord over this finances. And he studied Proverbs. He said, out of all the books of the Bible, Proverbs will basically tell you what to do and what to, not to do with your finances. And through that, just that, that, that book, that became a, a living, breathing revelation for him. All of that changed. And now he's multi, he, t he teaches everybody how to do everything uh, with their finances. And he's a very wealthy man. No debt. 
it's 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 amazing what God can do if you let him. Now our meaning and purpose, like I said, it comes from our alignment under God and fulfilling his kingdom purposes, not ours. That's where our purpose comes from. Reward number five, and, and you, we, we got this pretty much covered in, the, in, in our church, is emotional stability. Because we're all stable here. <laughs> no, <laughs> there, are, there are times. So the fifth reward is, or incentive for being a kingdom steward is you receive emotional stability. You know, there's the fear and worry at the top of the list out there right now, and, and, and especially with this pandemic going on, but even in general before it was going on, fear and worry permeates even Christians. You know, um, it's one of the favorite tactics of the enemy uh, because he loves to see us grovel and, 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 and cower in, in the corner. And, and, and you know, um, God doesn't want that at all. Fortunately, like I said, we're in Kingdom Life Church and we get the tools here that we need, like it, like the 60-day challenge and others, um, for dealing properly with toxic emotions such as fear and worry and all of them, actually, uh, through forgiveness. But the, for, the, for the sake of the stewarding message, we're just going to look at worry. And we want to know what worry really is, right? So I'm going to define it for you. It'll be, it'll be pretty, pretty simple. And hopefully it will give you a good contrast of what you can and can't do before you fall into sin, because worry is sin. All the toxic emotions are sin. Let's put that out there. Worry is a sin. It's not merely a concern. Okay? Worry is concern gone amok. A good way to test between legitimate concern and illegitimate worry is this. Ask yourself, have I done all I can do, but I still continue to function as if there's more that I can do? <laughs> That'll give you the difference between being concerned and falling into worry. You should stop at, I've done all I can do. All the grace that was given to me by God to do, I fulfilled that particular purpose and I'm done. If I continue to function internally, spinning the wheels and getting anxious, because I think there's more I can do, even though I can't, that's worry. And that's useless. And it's, and it's horrible. You know how I know it's not a sin? How I know it is a sin? Worry? is because what? God says, don't worry. Anything that God says and you do the opposite is obviously sin. It's just kind of like, duh. Fear not. Don't worry. For tomorrow. What tomorrow? Fear and worry are a faith problem. To worry about your life is to temporarily forget who your Heavenly Father is. You don't want to forget who your Father is. You know what? In all my time, my whole life growing up under my dad and, and, and with my dad and everything, I never once worried that I wouldn't have something to eat. Now, we had times of, of blessing. We had times of famine in my life as a child. But you know what? I never had a worry that I wasn't going to be able to eat or that I wouldn't have clothes. And I, and I think I couldn't even, I couldn't even think of any time regardless of what, I mean, he might have worried. <laughs> I didn't feel it, <laughs> but you know how fathers can be, you know? Um, but I, how much more, the Father would do for us, the Heavenly Father, the, the one that's flawless, that, that's beyond reproach, that doesn't have any evil in Him, how much more would He want to 
take care of us and make sure that we have everything that we need. Amen? Now, I don't know how God will solve your problems or, or fix your concerns, but I can guarantee you that if you commit your life fully as a kingdom steward, managing all that he's given you, and according to his principles, he will take care of you. The sixth reward, divine reversals. And this one hit me really hard in my study because prophetically I feel like we're going to start seeing some divine reversals. We can tap into divine reversals living as kingdom stewards because God, I think, I think God will, will turn things around for the better. I love this reward. <laughs> I love this incentive. If, it, if, if, if there wasn't any other incentives, I, I want this one. It made me think about Psalm 24 where, you know, it says, lift up your gates, let the king of glory is coming in. Because it's, it's like, it's like he's just going to do it for us. We, we, do, we do the lifting of the gates. We do the, the opening of the doors. We do the faithful obedience to him. And he does some really tremendous things for us. Malachi 3.11 says, Then I will rebuke, <coughs> rebuke the devourer for you. Wow, that was a tongue twister. <laughs> then I will rebuke the devourer for you so that it will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor will the vine in your field prove to be fruitless to you, says the Lord of armies. I love it. First of all, I like to say is it says the Lord of armies. But, I, but he's going to do it for us. I will rebuke the devourer for you. I, I love it because it seems like it's almost a sovereign work. It's just because he wants to bless you because, you're, because of our obedience and our stewarding over he just wants to bless us by, you know, keeping being able to be fruitful. The devourer is one who wants to rip you off and steal away the source of your blessing. Not just your blessing, but the source too. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus came so that we might have abundant life and live in it. Maybe the enemy stole years from you. Maybe stole some of your resources and bad investments that you made. If you discover in the secret of living in alignment with his will, you will see a turnaround period. You will. I, I, I guarantee it. You know what? Uh, uh, almost, like I said, almost a decade ago, it's been about eight and a half to nine years. I was at the lowest point in my life before I came here. And on... And in fact, the enemy tried to steal my life at one point uh, on March 29th. It was the exact date where I had, I wanted to jump from a moving car that was going relatively quick and I wanted to be done with life. If I lived, I didn't care if I died, you know, even better, I'd be in heaven or whatever. And uh, I, I just wasn't thinking straight. It was in a really bad place. The enemy wanted to take my life from me that day. And, you know, the divine reversal <laughs> was my daughter was born several years later on March 29th, the same day that the enemy wanted to take my life and came for my life. He then blessed me in divine reversal and gave me another life that I could steward for him. I'm just so thankful. Not only did he spare me, but he gave me so much more. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But if we remain aligned under under our owner, we give him room, we give no room for the enemy, and God will have our backs. Reward number seven, the 
final reward is the opportunity to co-reign with Messiah in the coming kingdom. Now, heaven isn't all about sitting on clouds and playing harps. We know that scripture talks about heaven as being having cities and, and uh, housing and streets. and Well, all of those things need taken care of. So our ability to govern here on earth, as far as what we can, that what we're doing for the Lord, is going to be directly proportional of from when we go to meet him in glory of what we're assigned to do. Because there, it's a civilization in heaven. We're going to have, you know, whether it's, you know, over a city block or a house or, you know, whatever God gives us in our eternal reigning, we'll be ruling with him. And we'll be governing over whatever area, whatever regions, you know, depending on what you did down here for him. And I think that why not? Do the best you can down here. You're going to be living in an eternity. You don't want to be a street sweeper for eternity, do you? <laughs> Poking the little pieces of garbage. Not that there's garbage in heaven. But you know what I'm saying. I'm sure there's so many levels. But you don't want to be doing that for all of eternity. The kingdom steward again. These are some of the takeaways I want you to take with you today. What a kingdom steward is. A believer who faithfully oversees the protection and expansion of the assets God has entrusted to him to manage on his behalf. I want you also to remember Psalm 22, verse 1. The earth is the Lord's and all it contains. <laughs> the world, and everybody who dwells in it. Another thing is God meets all your needs, but not necessarily all your wants. <laughs> when you confuse ownership with stewardship, and we went over this before, this is very, this is very costly if you don't pay attention in your life. When you confuse ownership with stewardship, you'll tend to place the emphasis of your investments in the wrong locations. And finally, what was worry? The difference between genuine concern and illegitimate worry was what? Uh, after you've done all you can do, even as unto God, but you remain functioning as though you could still do more. That's worry. And to worry about your life is to forget who your father really is. Amen? So those seven rewards are answered prayers with the Lord's presence in your prayer life. Two, your needs will be met. Three, divine guidance. If you wanted to know more about divine guidance, get this series. Four, purpose-filled life. Five, emotional stability. Six, divine reversals. And seven, the opportunity to co-reign with him when the time comes. Amen. You've been listening to Pastor Dennis Clark and Dr. Jennifer Clark of Full Stature Ministries at Forgive123.com. Full Stature Ministries reserve all copyright protections under applicable law. Our copyright policy is available at our website, forgive123.com. For more information about Full Stature Ministries and additional life-transforming materials, please visit forgive123.com.